Hey, this is Tracy Lewis with Stuff and Things. I did not get an intro video as we went and picked this up because we just came home, I guess home being our home area of Central Florida, where we ping pong around the Thousand Trails campgrounds. Um, there's three of them in this area. And we stay mostly at Wachula or, or, or uh, Three Flags and very rarely, if we have to, we'll stay at Orlando, but it's uh, the internet there is pretty weak. So we went down after staying at the Great Outdoors to Fiesta Key, which is a an encore park. So it's a, affiliated with Thousand Trails, and we have a, a membership that gives us a discount. So we got to go to Fiesta Key for a week and paid twenty bucks a night, and it was very tropical and. Everything is revolving around fishing. The resort has, you know, a marina and a restaurant and a pool and um, a little swimming area in in the water there. And then we went up to the Everglades National Park and stayed two nights. We were the only people there. We did a pretty good job overall of avoiding all of the stinging, biting bugs. So that's where we came from. We got ourselves parked and immediately set out to go uh, get a couple of things for the refrigerator and stop by and pick up my paper pumpkin, which arrived ahead of me and I forgot to video it. So it has been a pretty fun week for us just doing our vacation from our vacation uh, because pretty much we live permanently on vacation it feels so I know nothing about this particular kit I know that the box is very beautiful and I remember when I put up the little thumbnail onto my website that I saw that we got two spots so let's see what we've got so we have crushed curry and soft suede very pretty and yes we get more sunflowers um, I have, re it has been requested that I reveal the stamp sets when I do this. Oh, I see some nice honeycomb foil laser cut pages, and I thought that I would, we've got a special color of tissue. I'm set up here in a different space on, this is the, the fold out end of my cabinet that turns into a desk and then I found out or hub discovered a way to hang my um, cell phone camera from these cabinets so that it isn't on the floor the tripod when it's on the floor just shakes too much all right so we have for a one-of-a-kind friend hello wishing you so much happiness Thank you, a couple of bees, the sunflower, a sprig leaves, and the center of the sunflower. So, very nice. Oh, look at that. So, we've got envelopes fully decorated. And um, for, for me, it's a pretty much a no-brainer. I will happily cut into those to make cards and use plain envelopes. Uh, but you will have to decide if you want to keep the envelopes for mailing or if you want to use them to decorate your cards. So we've got some mini dimensionals and some double-sided adhesive. I have uh, for years hoarded the adhesives as well as all of the extra trims and things that I don't use. I have them in different containers. I've shown videos where my how I store do my storage and now probably for uh, six months maybe more maybe a year I have moved all of my paper pumpkin adhesives that were in two baggies. They did fill up two baggies. And I finally took one baggie and it's in my cabinet drawer here and I use it for 
all of the cards that I make because I have so much of it. And that's even after making. Um, I always make uh, probably eight to ten of the kit cards with my alternatives. I show you guys up to, what, over 20? But I will actually convert a number of those into cards that I then uh, do give to my Paper Pumpkin Perks program people. I do send them out every six months they get a selection of them. And then every third month they get a generic thank you card from me that I put a post-it note so that if they want to reuse it they can. So I still even with the, all of the cards that I create with Paper Pumpkin have many extras uh, of the adhesives and the trims. So I am looking at all of these different parts and pieces. I see three designs. They did even decorate the back of the cards for us. If you can see, there's the front and the back, and there's the inside. So lots and lots of supplies. And then of course, there's a green. So we get nine total cards. We have a bunch of cutouts. Look at the little cutout die cut bees. Here's some honeycomb that is pretty much sized appropriate for the bee. We've got three specialty die cuts with the watercolor treatment on them. I already showed you the gold honeycomb. Yeah, this is a very good kit. Um, one sheet of specialty die cut labels it looks like. And got all those pieces. One more label. That's uh, smaller, actually same size as that. Yellow. And let's see what have we got for envelopes. We've got Yes, we are, we've got a watercolor wash on the one side, the inside here, and on the back is a full scene. And all of them are the same. And I'm making sure there's nine, three, six, nine. So plenty of materials to play with. I'm not even sure at this point what I will want to add to what we have already, uh, maybe embossing folders and some different treatments. The paper is the white core paper, which means you can sand. The green one is probably the best, so you get six possibilities of sanded surfaces. And then we can experiment with adding texture to any of these two different designs. Not sure about the wanting to sand off, but we could rough up the edges. Kind of a shabby chic, all sorts of ideas. So I am going to go away now. That is interesting. I'm not sure what this guy is. Maybe we're supposed to stamp on it? I have not looked at the directions. Usually I don't look at the directions, but because I'm not really sure what that is for, I mean, it looks like a uh, sunflower yellow, but without any of the line detail and without the center. So I am curious what that is for. And I will get all these pieces cut apart and start contemplating alternatives. I will, of course, come back if I have any uh, supply tips for prep or come up with any additional external supplies. And then of course I will do my mix and match and end up with a nice big showcase at the end of which I always target for 20 or more layouts for you guys to be inspired by. So stay tuned.
All right, I am back and I have prepared some supplies as well as pulled some added supplies. Did some stamping that I will show. I have a couple of layouts and then I am actually gonna do some live stamping today. So the supplies that we were provided, some interesting things about them. The very first interesting thing is there is a B and there is a bee. We'll even give it a flower. Like so. So you guys take a look at this and tell me, I'm gonna lift it up so you can see the bees up close. I hope that that's focusing. All right, and now I will reveal the secret. So whoever created this artwork was very clever. You get a whole bunch of these beads. And here's what they did. All of them are the same. And if you look closely, their butt end and their front end are almost identical. I am sure that there is, is a correct front and back, but they made it such that you can use these both directions. So ponder that, go ahead and pull your own kit out and see what you think. Let me know, because I'm thinking that these totally look like they work either way, all of them. So that was the first thing that I noticed when I was playing around with the pieces after I had cut them out. So there's lots and lots of these bees. Look at all of them. So you've got tons of materials to play with there. All right. Next, I noticed that definitely the cut out but not filled in sunflower is meant for you to stamp it. So I'm gonna do that with you. I'm gonna go ahead and do, I mean, you could use the crushed curry if you wanted, but I'm going to use the soft suede. So it's easier to show you what I'm going to be doing. All right, so we've got these cuts. They are very specific to the flower. So as I was trying to line it up just to see if this is as it was intended, I did indeed feel that, there, there we go. So I am going to Try to not get in the way of the camera, but I have to... Oh, and sorry, they are mowing. In fact, he's right here. He'll be gone in a second. That's one of the, our favorite things. We had a larger property for 15 years and had to mow it. And it's just lovely that we no longer have to mow. Wherever we go, somebody else mows. It's the little things. Okay, so I am looking as much as I can straight up and down looking at the lining up of the stamp with all the little cutouts. And I'm gonna see if I got it. I think you get, yeah, so look at that. It is exactly lined up perfectly. So you can choose to use the yellow or the soft suede or go with any other colors if you have a bunch of them. The trick I see, and how I will get this apart because I don't want to risk smudging, I will use my take your pick tool. This is take your pick tool is new because my other take your pick tool fell out of the cabinet. Even though we have the cabinet mostly locked, it managed to open up and this fell out of its cup it was in and it went underneath one of the slides. So Hub found it when he was doing some work, you know, many months later. All right, 
And so by that time I had already replaced it. Okay, so that is showing you I could have done a little bit better job rotating it, but I think it will work. And then I'm going to do for the center, I will do another soft suede. Now I will say that I'm not using my new soft suede spots. We got two of them crushed Korean soft suede. And that is because one of my Paper Pumpkins Perks customers forgot to put her code in and didn't get this kit. So I'm going to share this kit with her. I haven't figured out how we're going to share the stamps. I have every single stamp set for the last five years, so I might just stamp her up a whole bunch of um, images. But, but I'm going to send her the spots. I have lots and lots of spots. Okay, so there is the flower stamped the way it was intended. I could even trim off a little bit of the ends where I misrotated it, but it wasn't too bad. I mean, if I could get this, get it this well done while being on camera, you spending as much time as you need to get it lined up perfectly should have no problems. So that was the second thing. And now I wanted to go over some of the different materials with the supplies that were provided. So keep your vellum because there's lots of areas of this vellum that you can cut or punch or die cut small um, images. If you need to, you can you can like cut to make it take up less space, but I would keep this. This is worth keeping. The labels, die cut outlines, I didn't think were worth keeping, so I let those go. And same with the bees and the flowers. I have put, made a couple of the bees popped up for doing layouts. I've done some stamping on, I used the, the, in all cases, I used the soft suede for stamping the sentiments. And then I noticed this one wasn't done very straight, but because of the font, I think it's a very forgiving font. I really like it because it's kind of tilted one way. But when I look at it, it does not look that bad at all because it's a nice, uh, friendly font. Just a casual one. Um, now, I want to show you the envelope. So the envelope, the way I cut envelopes apart is I take my trimmer and I just trim off the very edge so it's nice and smooth. And you end up with this image and I have cut a very nice scene from the flap. The top flap makes this scene. The full flap, if I fold this, this scene is a very nice full scene. And I went ahead and did a treatment to it to show you. Of course, I'm looking for it and it's hiding somewhere. And then I do have, sitting in a somewhat laid out space, I did the half moon and trimmed off the double layers. So I end up with this little strip, which is a very whimsical look. And I kept as much of it as I could when I trimmed it down. And I've done a treatment to this as well that I will share with you. It is sitting off to the side. Oh, here we go. I went ahead and used the hive 3D die, I mean die, embossing folder for the back of the envelope, which I did trim down. And any number of backgrounds, I'll just use this this one. So I picked out um, a variety of mats. So this particular piece for me, I was going to go ahead and rough up the edges, edges make it rough because it's already curled, and then give it a couple of tears. So I will do that, and there will be some layouts with this. I'm gonna do a couple of layouts with this smooth before I do the rough, so I'm not gonna rough it up for you guys to see. And that takes care of the envelope. The third piece of the envelope I will share with you actually is a kind of a mocked up layout, and it shows 
another embossing folder, the fern, the fern embossing folder, if that is what it is called, Fern 3D, uh, is another good one to use. And that is what it looks like. I left the arc because I liked it. And then I told you I left this corner as much of the green of the corner as I could. And then this is a popped up flower. I've got a honeycomb laying on top, not underneath, because it's it kind of loses the, you can't really see it, it just washes out. And then the, this is linen that you can color with um, mossy meadow blends. Get a couple of bees on there. This particular trim I just had out it is the threaded twine. It's from the holiday catalog. It has the little silver um, tinsel in it. So I've got a couple pieces of this and I just stuck it underneath. The wishing you the happiest of birthdays is one that I pulled out as an added su supply. And that is the Charming Sentiments bundle that has all of the dies that cut out that cut out the words very tight, tighter than I could ever fussy cut because I am not the best fussy cutter. So of course I saw this and had to get it. Somebody who's a great fussy cutter would look at this and go, nope, I don't need the dies. I'll just get the sentiments. So that's an added supply and one cute layout. I don't wanna lose my bees though, so I'm keeping track of those. Um, you maybe could even do add a little more interest and have that sunflower nestled behind. But keep in mind, for me, I want to stretch this to do as many cards as possible. So personally, I probably would not do this added layering. I would keep the sunflower for something else. Or I might add a sunflower, but I might fussy cut it. Not the best, but I would try to be able to get. So that's the nice thing is that you could take um, a yellow, you know, like so saffron, and you could do your own water droplet treatment, stamp it, and trim it out yourself if you wanted more of those, because we only get, it looks like four of these. So these three non-stamped, and then the one that's stamped. All right, next, I cut apart all of the card bases. This is one card base. Here's the two pieces. I've already started a mock-up. I added the Melon Mambo for the front, and then this piece can be its own, so the front and the back. The next one is really fun. So here is what the card base looks like uncut. And I don't know if you see it, but I see this as a piece of art that you can frame. You can add layers, you can add a very cute word popped up, and then decorate it, put it in a frame. Maybe a frame with some funky matting because it isn't a standard frame size picture, but I did just want to point out that this by itself is a nice enough image, and even though it has the seam down the middle, I can't even see the seam maybe a little bit here, but you would be adding your own layers to it. So keep that in mind as an option. And you get three of each style of card. So you can save one of these and use the other two and make double. So you would get five total projects out of the three with this design. Then I went ahead with the one half. I did cut one of these for you guys. And here is the one side. And then I went ahead and I was just curious. So I went ahead and stamped the thank you. So if you wanted to do some really simple cards, you would have an instant card just by stamping the thank you. You could even stamp something over here. And then you could 
instead add a layer, pop this up, which I have not done yet. And that would make a nice card on the simple side, not anything too fancy. So next, I want to talk about this is your free gift. I thought it was the two inks, but actually in the text um, on the flyer that they sent, this was your free gift. To me, both inks and these were the free gift, and you get eight of these. So what I would do to stretch this to double, you could either just do smooth cuts, diagonal, halfway, but I was doing a cut of just going through, and I've done it part way, so you can use the outside and the inside by snipping and trying to be a little bit thoughtful with which pieces I am snipping into so that they kind of wind and meander around. I haven't looked at this because this is the first one I started and I thought I would do this with you guys. So we we'll get to see what it looks like together. So there are the two pieces. I'm going to grab one of these designs. I think of this as a vertical. So you can add that to the top. up flower bit. Now you only have three of these popped up flowers, so they're only going to stretch so far, but I want to get a bunch of different varieties. These flowers, by the way, are super delicate. They are die cut, and you can see that it's wafer thin, so be very careful. I already cut this one a little bit apart. So, we've got a couple of bees, and again, the bees go both directions because the fronts and the backs are almost indiscernible between the difference. I'm just gonna grab this. I haven't even trimmed this down to show you with it matted, but there's one layout. Let's just put this aside and grab a different piece. What does this look like? So if that was flat, you could do a wonderful card. I don't know that I want to uncurl this, but if you wanted to uncurl it, add this to the top. It is already trimmed down, but I think that this would be with careful tacking around the edges. Let's hold this down. For a one-of-the-kind friend, and you do have this. Case, since I'm doing vertical, I'll probably do something cool like this. And don't forget, we've got the colored linen, which I've got over here. I'm going to 
try this. The linen that I have is in on a on a little round dowel. Some of them come flat on a card, the older ones. But I like the way they come nowadays. I haven't even got out, come to think of it, any embellishments like um, pearls, rhinestones, or sequins. I am thinking the fancy, everything fancy sequins that come in three different colors. You get all three colors, plus a bunch of little doodads. Those would probably be the best option to mix with. And I'll go ahead and pull something, and when I do the layout pictures, you'll see probably the everything fancy sequins will be put on top. So here is what you can do with the outside of the gold die cut. And of course, I haven't even taken any photography, so hopefully I will remember these ideas. Because that will be the next part, is getting a bunch of photography done. I wanted... I am going to do some stamping. Before I go away. I haven't done that in a couple of episodes, but I just wanted to show that this strip you could do some really fun things with. Popping up parts of it, you could go ahead and do the fern embossing and do, you know, a crisscross. If you wanted this to be smooth, you could do a texture. Um, one of the retired embossing folders that I did not get sold, actually it didn't retire till after my sale thing was over, is the, there's actually two of them, they're both retired. Tasteful Textile actually ends up doing a watercolor texture. So you could put this on either the, the tall strip or the background, whichever one. And then there's also a retired embossing folder painted texture. So far, since I didn't sell these, these might just not ever get sold. But they're good ones. There's also the subtle, which I also have stashed aside, that could be used for using smaller pieces to make strip cards like this. I love my strip cards. I haven't done any designs with this hopeful piece. Uh, what I was thinking, we only get three of these pieces, and I was thinking it might be fun, since there's actually three different floral elements, that it might be fun to trim around and do sort of a fussy cut on each one, and then have them in one of the corners, and this would stretch this piece out to three pieces. So that is something to consider. And then I have one fun thing that I did just for giggles. It was the very first thing I did before I worked on anything else. There is an embossing folder that I really like. I have not used it very much. And it is called Pretty Flowers. So this particular one, when I saw this design with these two colors, the Melon Mambo to um, Mango Melody, actually pulled out my collection of colored pencils and I did some coloring which I will talk about. I haven't gotten beyond here because I might actually like just one of the floral and leaf segments colored. I colored them very softly. This is on basic white so it is a very smooth surface. It will be difficult to um, get the vibrancy of like full-on coloring, though I could keep going. I just wanted to get the concept to show you as something new and different. And the colors that I used was, for the leaf, it's Granny Apple Green and Garden Green. 
and I actually used Pumpkin Pie Rich Razzleberry and Daffodil Delight for the flower. And I colored to get the two-tone color of the flower. All of my coloring was done at an angle, very, very light pressure, and far away from the pencil. My hand literally is that far away. And I just kept coloring and coloring. I didn't spend a ton of time. And I went ahead and let the pencil lead go over the edge to, you'll see that most of the edges have a dark line around them. And maybe to finish it off, I will make sure that I go around the edges so that we get a little bit of a shadow effect. And again, this is just a spontaneous thing. I've never done it before. Um, and I wanted to show you if I then take this, and this is full size, I have not trimmed it down, so you could trim it down and add a mat. And then, I am looking for, different layout possibilities. You definitely could add this flower in front and wishing you the happiest of birthdays. I just wanted to show that that is a really pretty embossing folder that you could do some coloring. You could color with blends as well. I have been spending more time coloring with the pencils lately because that's just my my new thing. You've got your B. There's the, you could add a, a section of this gold. If you wanted to section this up even smaller, you could kind of go and make a smaller piece of it. And then if I do that, let's go ahead and do that. We'll make like a bigger chunk and a smaller one. So if I have this gold, and I just place it like that, make my little flower. You only have three of these, so I don't know if I would actually choose to use this, but I'll get a picture of it. Um, but there, that is very cute. Again, you can do either the, the knobby, So I would trim this down and you could put a mat behind either the f color of the flower or uh, the, a green, granny apple green, or there's a mossy meadow. And I went ahead and cut this sentiment out in the middle of the mossy meadow so that I can use it as a mat on one of the projects. And then for... Uh, this has got some cuts, but for a very thin matte edge that I went ahead, this could be used for this particular card. All right, so there's some mixing and matching as well as uh, some fun extra materials, as well as fun prep of the supplied materials. And now I'm gonna do some stamping with this great stamp set on some basic white. I have a couple of pieces here so we can do three or four stamping projects that I will probably, I'll take photography of them as is and then I'll also dress them up a little bit in the showcase at the end. Be sure to add your notes. If you think of any clever bits with this kit, like the fact that the bees are reversible so you can do um, alternative angles. Also, one more thing I just now noticed, there's the gold side and there's the white side. So, if I'm using a fun colored background or I didn't do anything yet with this background, this is the white core, so I was thinking with this background that I was probably going to emboss it with fern and then do a little white sanding and look at how well that looks on there. So 
here is yet another I can tell I can tell already that getting to my minimum of 20 which is always my goal is going to be very easy to do so here's another good use of the materials doing the white side of the die cuts all right so let's do some stamping so I'm doing this in reverse order this stamping will finish it off and then I will go away and do a bunch of photography with the layouts I'm only going to do the two colors that we had now again my spots are well used they are not fresh and juicy like the spots that come with the kit but I'm going to be sending those away so I'm going to do first I'm going to do another one of these I like the hello so I'm going to pull off the very cute hello just looking for my blocks. Okay. I do like this whimsical font. one very simple 30 second card and then yes let's do the center as far as I can tell the center doesn't matter which way you rotate it let me know if you when you're working on this find that it is supposed to be a certain way but as far as I can tell it isn't so there's one this time, get my chamois out. I want to do the sunflower yellow. So we have a couple of stamp B stamps, and we have a leaf and a sprig. If you wanted to get fancy, I'm probably not going to do it for time, but if you want to mask and do a set of sunflowers, uh, what I use to do masking is full sticky, and this actually happens to be not just full sticky, it's super sticky. Uh, I can go ahead and stamp and carefully fussy cut I like the way you fussy cut sunflowers because it's just pretty much straight lines almost cutting straight in sure so if you wanted to keep this you could cut this out completely and then keep it in your box and you would then that one doesn't line up perfectly but as you cut them out, you line them up, that's it. That's right there, perfect. 
I should have checked that before I started cutting. You don't even have to cut the whole flower out if you only want to have one section be overlapped, which is what I'm going to do. And I may speed this up. if I can get the idea across. There you go. So that's how you can do with pretty scene. You don't have green. If you have green, you can go ahead and take a leaf and use green. And if you want to have it overlap, you can use the mask to do it. I'm gonna go ahead and trim off just a tiny bit more of this so I can get a leaf in there. Line these up. I will. I'm gonna go ahead and do this in the soft suede because I don't have my green out. So this way, because I've done my trimming, I can nest. I actually want to be a little bit further. So I'm gonna do this one more. So, oh, and it's raining. We have rain. Yeah. We had rain yesterday and another thunderstorm, but I wasn't ready to film, so I didn't get to share that with you guys. So let's see how this looks. So that is what masking looks like. Making a scene. In this case, let's see what was I wanting to do? Okay, just for fun, I'm gonna put the sentiment not in the normal area that I would put it. Over here. Okay, so there is another one. I actually wouldn't mind covering this up, getting my leaf back. Every time it rains here and I'm inside, it feels like I'm back in Washington State. And I'm going to go ahead and put a leaf at the bottom, just like that. So there is, oh, and then I don't want to forget the center. This is coming out nicely. All right, so there is a second design. And I do, when I make my masks that go with particular sets, I keep the masks in with the sets. And then last summer when I did my, or a month ago, a month and a half ago, when I did my sale, all of my masks went. I went ahead and kept them. Even if I did any special cuts with my electronic fussy cutter brother, I uh, allowed those to go to the new homes, the new owners of the stamp sets I was selling. All right, so that's the second one. And there was the first one. Uh, the next one, I'll do one more here. And this one will be two-tone two one and I'm going to do one more all over and maybe when I do my showcase at the end I may use this as a background. So there's a cute background and the way I did it this way if I want to I'm going to do a thank you that I can cover up if I'm going to do a couple of layouts, but it'll fit nicely right here. And yes, I purposefully left that spot free for the sentiment. And I've always advised that you put your sentiment first, which I should have done. And I do advise that, especially if you're uh, new to doing stamp designs and layouts. That way you know where the orientation is, but the trick still is to make it as natural looking and random as possible. So I do that by rotating my paper. And you'll notice that I rotated. I don't like arbitrarily try to set it because these aren't uh, they don't look lined up, they just look very random, which was the effect I was going after. And then at the very end here, if I wanted to clean it up a little bit more, I can take and just do an edge here and there, probably on these two sides will do it. Make sure you carefully ink up whatever edge if you're not going to ink up the whole sunflower. All right, so 
there we have three instant layouts that I will get photography of. That one, this one, and this one. So that's all I've got for the for this kit. I think, of course, it's an excellent kit. Uh, keep in mind that you could, if you wanted to, you know, I think sunflowers are good for masculine or feminine, but if you wanted, you could just focus on the bee with the honeycomb with the hive embossing folder and come up with some pretty masculine type cards. Uh, even the gold side I think would be fine. So you can do some layering up and just use the bees, the honeycomb bits. You have two kinds of honeycomb bits. You have the vellum and you have the gold and then the gold becomes white. So I think that those are your masculine options. Don't forget that if you're going to cut up all of your envelopes to stamp on your envelopes as well as the insides of the card. So you've got two extra bees here that I didn't use that I could use. And um, also a, a, little, a little sprig here that can also make a nice envelope or inside of the card stamp. Let's see what this bee looks like though. I think he's a little more cutesy. There he is. So you have one that's open two wings and then a sideways flyer like that. So if you have any other ideas for the pieces that I missed, please let me know. Leave it in the comments and I will approve it for everyone to see. Any questions, comments, or concerns you can leave here on the video as well or over on my blog. I will have all of the added supplies on my blog. I do have my Paper Pumpkin Perks program. Um, I'm just mentioning that since um, one of my Perks customers, I'm going to help her out since she forgot to order the kit this month. And yes, it's a really good one. So I will be helping her with some materials so she can do make some cards with it. And uh, I have information on the pap Paper Pumpkin Perks program on the very end. And you can also get to it from my website. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.